Good evening. Could you please join us to the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for February 25th. Uh, first thing we'll have is public comment. Yes. And Charlie, I know you, you, you came in. Our, we yeah. did close a little bit early right, because right. she was gone, but I'm going to give you a chance to the run next, all the next meeting will be fine. Okay, next meeting? Okay. Great. All right, very good. Then we'll hold it for the next meeting. I figured you might have been busy anyway. Thank you. Uh, I wrote this down so I can try to make this quick. Well, um, I'd like to address the first appointment. It's tired of acronyms, uh, you know, of, of bureaucracy, JOPs, MOUs, MOAs. As far as I'm concerned, it's SOBS. I've come before the BOS when James Barrington was the town manager to address the trash beach, only to learn we had an MOU with Dredd that hadn't been addressed in years. This past November 7th, New Hampshire Parks had a fall meeting. I learned that signs were being made to plow the CPA lot with an odd and even system. I informed this board, but that never happened. I also requested info on parking violations and revenues in the shoulder seasons when school was in. That never happened. The shine is wearing off Hampton Beach again. Parking prices and tickets are starting to keep people away. The town and the state both need to lead by example. Let's take a hard look at state park ticket violations, especially in the shoulder season. Let's have the town update our operation of the Ashworth parking lot. Could we work with the state's vendor for kiosks? Personally, I believe if the town started to charge by time, we would realize the most financial gain while being the fairest system. I believe the present system is just a shell game and people are getting tired of it. This is not the way to retain repeat visitors. When people pay $30, 40 50 to park, they act differently. Many people will not come back. They don't care about their trash because they won't be back. And along with that, they badmouth the experience of traffic, tickets, and price gouging. For the best part of two decades, I've probably attended as many meetings, if not more than anyone, to try to make the Hampton Beach experience a good one for our town and state residents, plus our visitors. Let's keep going forward, not slide backward. I'd like to challenge the state, the town, the Hampton Beach Village District, the Rec Department, the Chamber, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, local clubs, the business community, and any past, present, or future community leaders to raise funds and construct the nicest playground on the East Coast at the New Hampshire State Park near the bridge that would be free to all with access and free parking to all, all year round. Let's build something that, that always brings families. Let's build something that children, parents, and grandparents wouldn't be able to say enough about. It can be done in phases by creating funding mechanisms. Then maybe we can deal and trade today's playground to provide parking for the East Street Bandstands function room, which would increase usage and funds which could and create funds which would help the East Coast best playground. This would be something we might like to be famous for. While some purists might oppose change, I say do your homework. It's easy thanks to our historical society. The Hampton Beach Playground has, has had different locations over the years, but it would be nice to locate a new one where parking without meters or tickets could be used all year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Anybody else from the mm -hmm. public want to speak? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise. I don't have anything this evening. Regina? Um, yes, I wanted to bring up, I have an email from, we have a road race coming up. And oh, yeah. this is from a resident. Uh, she wanted me to mention the community calendar moments that Hampton Half Marathon, which covers 13.1 miles on Sunday, March 3rd, starts at 10. And therefore, the means traffic will be impacted from perhaps 8:30 o'clock, 8:30 in the morning on. Folks should look for posters in their areas to see the times that will be directed directly affected. Race directors can be reached at 
659-2824 before March 3rd. Local races donate generously to the Hampton Area Rotary, Hampton Food Pantries, Wanaconnet High Track and Chem Food Programs and the Hampton Recreation Programs. So that is from a note from Linda Dischagen, Dischagen who I know is uh, very heavily involved in these races and she wanted to give everyone a heads up because I know there's a lot of confusion on that day. That's all I have, thank you. Jim. Yeah, the, the Comcast survey, which is online, ends this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So I want people to know anybody that didn't take it. There also are still some blanks in the town hall. If somebody wants to do it on paper, they can do it. So it ends this Wednesday. Did I say Thursday? Wednesday. Wednesday it ends. And then we'll compile all the, uh, the results and stuff and get, get going on that, that uh, contract. Hmm. No, thank you. I just have the, uh, the SOS Recovery Community Organization will be holding a public informational session this Tuesday, February 26th from 8.30 to 10 at the Hampton Police Department's training room, 100 Brown Ave. Mm -hmm. SOS has been exploring opening a recovery center at 1 Lafayette Road. And, um, <clears throat> SOS is still exploring funding options and inviting the public to come learn more about their programs and services as well as offer the community the opportunity to ask questions and give feedback. Hmm. So um, that's all I have for announcements in the community calendar. Next thing we have is the approval of the minutes, February 11th. Mr. Chairman, I will so move the approval of the minutes of February 11, 2019, both the public session and the non-public session. Second. I have a second. All those in favor? I abstain. I wasn't here. Four, one abstention. The next thing we have is a consent agenda. We have a cemetery deed. We have a donation to the Leukemia, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. We have a PTA candidate's nice request to use of the Selectman's Room on March 7th. We have a parade and public gathering license for the Walk by the Sea. We have raffle permits for Experience Hampton and the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. And we have the Rockingham Planning Commission appointments of Barbara Kravitz, Mark Olson, Nan Carnaby. I will so move, Mr. No. Chairman. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next thing is appointments. First is Bill Bryce. It's not dread anymore. It's <laughs> well, parks and recreation. Park, parks and recreation. But natural resource and cultural resources, yes. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the board. Uh, Philip Rice, Director of the Division of Parks and uh, Recreation in the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. <laughs> and with me is Meredith cool. Collins. To my left, the uh, Regional Supervisor for New Hampshire State Parks for the Seacoast Region. And uh, Michael Hausman, who is our um, uh, Operations Supervisor for, this, for New Hampshire State Parks. Alrighty. So, um, and I know we've, uh, you've sat down, I know we've sat down before on the operations plan with, uh, Mike has been there with us before, and I think the last time we sat down it was uh, um, with uh, Brian Wilson, who is now the Assistant State Parks Director in Connecticut. So, wow, we trained good. him well. Mm. Absolutely. Fred, how would you like to? Up to you, Mr. Chairman. Alrighty. Well, we can start right at the front of it. And work through it if you want. You want what? Fred's letter? Is that what you? Well, no, the, the joint operations the joint plan. Joint operation plan. It <coughs> says 217, oh, okay. but it'd be 219. Right. But, uh, I, but I think it would be wise to read. Mr. Welch has done a pretty good recap here in his April 24th. If you would letter. like to read it? Go right ahead, Matt. Okay. It says, Dear Mr. Bryce, the Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen have instructed me to forward to you the Joint Operations Plan for 2017 that was tentatively approved by the Board at their April 17, 2017 meeting for your concurrence and signature. The selectmen in reviewing the plan noted concern that a number of additional items need to be discussed and included to resolve issues that have represented the problem areas in the past for both the town and dread. These problems include the current policy of dread regarding the plowing of parking lots during the winter months. The town is aware that some efforts have been adopted by dread to begin this process. The selectmen request a provision be included that will provide for the plowing of dread parking lots on Ocean Boulevard following each snowstorm, as well as the clearing of the sidewalks without 
placing or blowing snow onto the beach. Number two, the board wishes to change the current policy of dread regarding the cleaning of the beach. A policy needs to be adopted requiring your vendor to clean the beach during the off season when large groups of people on warm or other days descend on the beach and leave trash that needs to be removed and is not currently removed and properly disposed of. Number three, the board feels strongly that public <clears throat> drinking on the beach or state property should be dealt with immediately and included in the joint operation plan. This past weekend, large numbers of people assembled on the main beach, engaged in partying, and left piles of trash, including beer and liquor bottles, on the sand. The town can only handle such problems when adequate forces and funding is available for us, together with financial resources that will pay for adequate enforcement. The town believes that DREAD should provide funding to allow for the Town of Hampton Police Department to place swarm police officers on the beach to resolve this issue. The, number four, the policy of dread allowing horses on Hampton Beach is in need of review. The town has adopted an ordinance disallowing the non-removal of excrement deposited from animals on town property and, as you know, a portion of the beach is town property. Horses allowed on the beach leave large amounts of excrement on the beach and in the water. It is felt that this practice should be changed. Town property at the beach will be posted regarding this practice and as forces are available will be enforced. A copy of the warrant article that was adopted is enclosed. The Hampton Mounted Patrol, by the way, uses uh, bags to uh, prevent the horses from <coughs> defecating on the beach. All of these items, as well as possibly others, are in need of our joint attention. Together we can res resolve problem areas for the benefit of our citizens and guests and their peaceful enjoyment of state and town property. On behalf of the board, I request that you draft provisions to be placed in the joint operation plan that will address these issues. We are available to meet with you to discuss possible solutions. Now, I am under the impression that there has not been a joint operations plan since 2017, or Six, what, what 16, has happened? Because I wasn't on the board till. I believe it was 16 was the last 16. one we had signed. So we've gone like two years without yeah. a joint operation. Uh, that's, that's not a good idea. So that's, now. That's are, why we're are, here to discuss it. Uh, well, excellent. So now, are you going to start us off on the uh, joint operations plan proposal? This is the one that we have? Yes. Yeah, we can yep. start with that. And uh, I assume Mr. Bryce and company have you copies. Have the, you have a copy of the, the, the one you gave us? In oh, 2017? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you have a that's copy. The last, yeah. That's the last one that we had that was yep. proposed. We're working yep. off that. So that's that's kind of what we're working off of. And if, and if you remember right, the, the letter that she read was from April 24th of 2017. Yes. So... Um, so some of those things that had happened on there happened last year. Um, we had a warm, real warm spell in early mm -hmm. April last year, and they had a big couple crowds at the beach, and we had issues with, with, mm -hmm. with trash and stuff on the beach. Um, as read, looking over this really quick, I know you guys have changed your policy on plowing, and I know you've been trying to do a lot better down there uh, with the parking lots and stuff. Um, so if we want to just... If we want to go through the, through the, yeah. the, the section JOP. by section. Sure. Could I just say one thing sure. about the, what they've been doing since? Yeah, this was sent out in April, which was April of 17 when we had that really hot day, and I believe something happened <laughs> with one of our police officers over at the Shell. I don't know if that was when in 17, and I believe this probably stemmed the whole letter from the town manager, and then we didn't get a response, so therefore we haven't signed the agreement since then. But I'm down there a lot. And I see the improvements, and they're really good. I just wanted to tell you that. And the sand's not there. I mean, even I haven't gone down there today, but the rest of the winter I've noticed big improvements, and I don't know whether the piles of sand on the beach are somehow affecting all the sand that used to come over the gate yeah. and land on the... It doesn't seem like that's happening as much as it used to. And also, obviously, the parking, you've got <coughs> plowed that and the sidewalks. So I just want to make that clarification. I'm down there all the time, and I see the changes. 
and I hope that we can mm -hmm. come to an agreement and have a real joint operations plan between the state and the town for our summer of 19. That's true. Yep. Just because this is an official meeting and stuff, we should use the proper name because it goes in the minutes. So rather than referring to it as dread, refer yep. to it Correct. as the proper name yes. rather Correct. than have it go into the minutes incorrectly. Yep. Cultural and natural resources should be the reference. Okay. Yeah. So, so we <clears throat> agree right, on so the we'll purpose. Stop. Yep. Well, we. The well, purpose is, is an express intent and purpose of the JOP is to provide for an effective working relationship between the town and the state and carry out the respective duties and concern with the operations and maintenance <clears throat> of state and town facilitated facilities located along the Atlantic coast in the town of Hampton. You do, do you want a motion to approve that paragraph? Sure. So we can go. I also you? move that we. What do you, what do you want? I'm going to suggest that you read yeah. you guys, further questions. Yeah. To the yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have anything? Is that part good for you? Uh, that's fine. Okay. So the second one is the, the intent of the JOP is the intent of the parties herein to fashion a working document that will establish a long-term relationship. The parties recognize that the framework upon which a working relationship is founded is the necessary to need to be elastic in, in its operations and will require changes in those operations as time passes in order to accomplish the party's prospective objectives and to provide the highest quality services to benefit the town and state and its citizens and visitors. Yeah. I think we're all, is that, does that sound okay with you guys? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, number one. Re refuge and recycling refuge. materials. A, town's responsibility. The town will provide and maintain receptacles for deposit of refuge and recycling materials as shown in table one below. The town shall provide for the proper disposal in, of refuge and recycling materials that it collects under the JOP at its, at its expense to the town's solid waste transfer station and recycling facility. All materials entering the facility shall be weighed. The town will train state employees who are designated by DREAD or the new name. We'll have to change the name. Yeah, to bring materials that have been picked up by state employees to the facility in the operations of the entrance gate, the weight station operations and requirements to access the facility as well as the location there and the disposal of refuge and recycling materials. Upon completion of the training, the, the town will provide such state employees with a personal access code for the admissions to the facility after hours. The state employees shall make up every effort to complete their operations as quietly as possible during the nighttime to not disturb the neighborhood. So, thank the suggestion, Mr. Chairman, that we delete the word recycling. Um, the material that is deposited in the recycling receptacles is basically contaminated trash. Mm -hmm. It's not recycling. Yeah. And uh, just so everybody knows, the reason I'm bringing that up is because they, they, they're doing an audit now at the receiving facility for the recycling. And whereas in the past, we deposited material there for free, we're now being charged $185 a ton for contaminated material. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we did the audits, Last year, we eliminated the recycling from the beach, and the contamination dropped from 50% to 1%. So it sort of gave us an idea of where the contamination, by and large, was coming from. There are now some additional problems with that, but not with the state. But uh, you folks don't have people minding the recycling facilities, so that the, the, the containers, nor do we. So most of the material at the beach is contaminated. And we can't afford $185 a ton. Right now, that looks to be, in the first six months of this year, about $130,000 that we do not have budgeted for the material that will be, that will be tipped at, uh, mm -hmm. and, in, in Massachusetts. And this is no fault over yours, ours. It's what... It's reality. It's reality, the what, way the uh, uh, recycling goes uh, now. And it's, it's not... We're not... You know, alone with this, I mean, it's happening out for the whole state, country, yeah. and everywhere. That they 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 dropped their requirements so low as to the amount of contamination that you could have in the recycling, that 
in effect, it costs you more to haul recycling away than it does to haul regular trash. Mm -hmm. So. Now, in light of that, um, we have recycling carts on the east side of 1A. Do we have town recycling carts still right. there? We have, we have recycling carts on both sides of uh, 1A. The state has recycling carts on their side, and we have recycling carts on our side. And we treat them all as trash simply because they are contaminated. Right, but what I'm asking is... And, and they are not charged for the material on the on the west side of Ocean Boulevard. We give you plastic bags of a different color. Because and that material comes to the transfer station on a different load, and that's not charged. That's free. Because that's business waste. No, well, primarily. Street, street, street waste. It's, it's our side of the uh, Route it's 1A. Street waste. Correct. Right. Yeah, right. The, the west side, side of 1A. Right. So right. Now, but my question is, are we as a community going to continue putting our easily identifiable carts on the east side of 1A. I think it's a matter of how many carts we have. And it doesn't it no. doesn't make any difference whether or not they're marked recycling or trash. Well I realize that because what's being deposited is all trash basically. Okay. So you don't think that it would be sensible for the state to have their own trash carts well, out there. You have carts out there. Yes, we oh, right. yeah. they have their own carts out there. Right? Okay. So and we, we have our carts on our side, they have their carts on their side. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we don't have any town of Hampton green and blue carts on the on the east side of 1A. No, there are state carts over there. Okay. Same, same colors. I, I just yeah. wanted to. Right. Uh, I was going to ask about uh, carry in, carry out policy, but since everything is trash and treated as trash, then we might just as well not worry about that. Um, hmm. I think from a management standpoint, it's almost impossible uh, for the state to police every single person who's on the beach to make sure whatever they bring in, they take out. What do they do at it other just, state parks? Well, it's, it's got to a point now, too, where even even a pizza box, if it's got oil from the pizza in it, that's yes. no longer yeah. right. that's yeah. no longer recyclable. That's trash. So, yeah. I mean, for you guys to try to try to do that would be physically impossible and, and, and if we put it in as recycling and it comes back as trash we get actually charged more so. on a busy day a warm day in the summertime we could have as many as better than a hundred thousand people on the beach going in and out during the day that's one of the population of the largest city in the state and and sometimes we get traffic jams which show how bad situation is down there but there's no way that the the, the department can effectively police that many people. You don't have that many employees to be down there doing that. It's just not feasible. So we, no. we just take it for granted that everything's being dumped. It's all being mixed. <laughs> uh, a lot of it's being just left on the beach for you to pick up with your equipment. Uh, is, is basically all trash. So we treat it as such because we have to. They can't go to the recycling facility. I'm still working on addressing this. Um, we, I think we're all in agreement as far as the waste goes, but when I came back on the board for my fourth term in 2013, I took a little rundown to the public works property. I think I had branches or something to get rid of, and I saw mountains of sand with all kinds of broken up chairs, broken up umbrellas, uh, anything you could name in there. And I was very annoyed. And I believe that's and been I went cleaned up, to up see, by now. Wait a minute. I was, uh, went up to see Fred and I said, what on earth is that? And he said, it's beach rakings. Has that been beach taken care of? Yes, this has been already taken well, care of. Well, 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 wait well, a minute. Well, 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 it's, I'm it's. I'm, if you don't mind, just stop interrupting me. Uh, I am concerned about, say, the 4th of July last year when residents came out of their property down there with their own trash bags because it was such a pig pen on the 4th of July and they were ashamed to have their beach look like that. If we're going to have the beach and if you are going to be in charge of that beach, you need to see to it that that beach is kept clean. 
Wasn't that addressed? I think it yeah. was addressed. Okay. Was, addressed. Yeah, was addressed. Was addressed. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. everybody chance. So why don't we just keep moving yeah. here? Because so. that, because that That's, beach. We, we takes realize we all realize that. Let's Regina. I agree. We need to move forward, but at the same time, there was a lot of people that were upset about waking up, waking, waking up and seeing that in front of their properties that they've lived in for decades and they've never seen it before. So I know that you took care of it, but let's just. I mean, really make sure that it doesn't happen again. Like, stuff happens, we all know we don't have control over some of these things sometimes, but a lot of people were upset that day. We, a lot of residents. I can assure you we've had a lot of conversations on okay. how to come up with a way to ensure that doesn't happen again. Thank and, you. And one of the things that we've agreed to is that if the trash bins, we don't have control over how many people are going to show up on the beach. Yeah. And there, there's a lot of people, and we're just sometimes it's just overwhelming, you know. And if those of you in that type of business, it's just overwhelming. But we, what we've agreed is that we don't want trash sitting on the ground, it should be bagged. Mm -hmm. So, the worst case is that you'd have bags of trash sitting next, get next to the um, waste receptacles, you wouldn't actually have trash on the ground, which we all agreed is, is unacceptable. So, uh, but we're also looking at ways of making our trash collection system more efficient so that we can, you know, ensure that we can keep ahead of it. But, you know, we, we operate the beach for more than a few days, those few busy days a year. And I think we, you know, we, we recognize, I hope you all recognize that when you have an extraordinary event like that, that it's we we would request a little bit of um, understanding of the challenge of taking care of all those people's trash, and um, we I can assure you we're we have had a lot of conversations and we're working what we can do to get that cleaned up as soon as possible. Well, I know you had some you had some mechanical breakdowns that over that time too, and yes, we we had a truck out of service. Short, I mean, there's all there's always all kinds of excuses, right. but we just want to move forward and not. And I, not I, I would hope that we can get some maybe from DOT or something if you needed another truck or something like that. Yeah. I'm sure you, you're you working on that. We, we are working on that to make sure it doesn't that doesn't happen again. So. Okay. So. Jim is going to want to speak. Yep. Right, Jim. Oh, no, I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, you don't? No, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, well, that's what I just asked. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't um, hear. Uh, yeah, I think whatever is agreed to here is always going to be a work in progress. Oh, yeah. There's always going to be something that's going to happen. It's been that way from what I've seen every single year for the last 15 years I've been here. Um, so, you know, we can only hope that you have the uh, resources when you need them um, to do something, but it's, it's, there's always gonna be breakdowns that can be remedied. And I'm sure that, you know, you'll be hearing from Fred if there's any issues, but it's a work in progress as far as I'm concerned. We have to work our way through it. Yep. Real quick. Yep. Will the different colored bags uh, take the uh, discarded uh, beach umbrellas and the crushed beach chairs and all that stuff? You know no. they leave stuff on that it's beach. Yeah, we are area. we are equally or more upset than you are about the nature of the trash that gets left at the beach for us to clean up, including including lawnmowers, um, couches, couches, tires. tires yeah. um, you know, so we're. We're trying to figure out a way to to deal with that and enforce it. Um, I'm not sure how you deal with beach umbrellas right now. Do they get just? Do they get? They're treated as garbage. They're treated as trash. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were certainly in the piles of beach rakings that I raised a well, roof about. The beach rakings have been taken care of, and I believe you guys are doing that right on the site now. Yeah, the beach rakings yeah. are going to a different yes. location. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. The only thing you should have for beach rakings is seaweed. And well, an occasional seal. We don't, we don't, we don't have to rake the beach, and I'm sure they have other stuff more than that that comes up in that machine. So, if it wasn't for that machine, we'd be having a lot more accidents down there because people tend to bring in bottles, which they're not yep. supposed mm -hmm. to do, and they bury them in the sand, and that machine pulls oh. them out and gets rid of them. So, Absolutely. I think that machine's essential to the operation down we, there. A few years ago, we spent, we we bought a. a a newer beach rake that so. was more efficient and took less sand, and if and then if we get can get a good operator on it, we're t we sh hopefully are taking less sand yep. than than uh, we were before to get all the trash off of that 
off of that beach. It's a it's a work in, in progress. Yeah, the whole yes. thing. Uh, the let's see. Some state parks, beaches, whatever, hire, say, college-age kids in the summer. And uh, there are other beaches that use carry-in, carry-out. I don't know if that's ever been considered. I don't believe when you go up to a gunquit in Maine, you see the messes that you see all over Hampton Beach if there is a possibility of enforcing a carry-in, carry-out policy and having some jobs for our young people in the area for the summer, let them stand there and see what people are taking in or taking out. You shouldn't have uh, to clean up all that mess. Didn't we have carry-in, carry-out yes, at one work. point? And it's, it didn't work. It failed. Why? It didn't work. They Why? did it for years. It didn't work. It, it didn't failed work. terribly. We were what against it. The board was definitely it. against it. There's no one to enforce it. It did not work. Why is there no one to enforce it? That's a different issue. That's a this different. is this has already been settled before, yeah. Mary Louise. So well. All right. Disposal of refuge. Refuse. And materials. State may be, may utilize a facility for disposal of materials collected under the JOP. All materials brought to such facility by the state must be weighed regardless of time of entrance into the facility. Mm -hmm. So, and I think you guys do that now. I, anyway. I think, Mr. Chairman, when we get down to um, the schedule for pickup <coughs> material, if I'm wrong, um, Mike, you can tell us, um, and Dred's responsibilities and the town's responsibilities and the disposal of refuse and recycling materials, that's pretty standard, and we've been doing it now for quite a number of years. The only thing that's changed in there is that we held a public hearing uh, back in, I think it was January, and the, the cost of disposal of waste is now 10 cents a pound rather than 7 cents a pound. <laughs> so, um, so okay. other than that, I think that, that pretty much, and that's what we I guess you'll have, to, you'll have to tell us whether it's worked or not. We tried to stay with what was in the original JOP for the schedule for pickup and how we handle it and how we get rid of it. and, and how we manage it, and I think the department has done a good job at that. Um, so this year it's 10 cents a pound? Is it's what 10 cents a pound. We, we held a 41 and at 9 hearing, yeah, I think it was in January. And that's the standard rate for the town of Hampton now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. we made sure we held the hearing to make sure that it was. Okay. So everybody pays the same. Um, beach raking, I think we, we kind of talked about. Um, they. As part of this process, they do White Island neighborhood, which is the town's neighborhood, and that's 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 our beach. Yep. Uh, but they use it as well. So, and they they've said they would beach rake it. So, and they have been doing that and been doing it faithfully. So, I have Regina, two questions. So, on the disposal of refuse and recycling, can we are we just going to take out and recycling now? Yeah, I would say yeah. I would say because it's all going to be refuse. Refuge. Yeah, I think if, if people. Um, March 11th, which is the next board meeting, we're going to have the Northeast Resource Recovery Association come in and do a presentation on exactly what's going on both with the national and international markets for recycling. Uh, it's it's uh, not a pretty picture. Uh, our good friends in China uh, who started out by closing down all of our recycling facilities in the United States because they took it for free and then paid the transportation was free, and then they paid us by the ton mm. to take the material. Uh, have now decided they don't want any of the material. So now that all of our resources are gone, we're stuck with material that we can't process. Um, and I think that's getting much, much worse. So we're going to have somebody come in and tell us about the international market and what's going on internationally with recycling, which is kind of depressing when you look at it. But you're all uh, throwing it in the ocean. Well, they can't do that in Long Island Sound anymore because it's full. <laughs> Uh, New York City side of that. But. So, so I, th I think as far as the, the beach also. raking, I think, so, unless oh, you folks have a, have a yeah, problem yeah, with beach raking. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, we, we were wondering, this, the agreement in 16 says that we would be allowed to put the two 30-yard dumpsters at the recycling center. I think the agreement in 2016 said that. Because right now they're um, they're down at South Beach, as people come into town, 
and then build a ramp so that we can unload. Now that's going to come at additional costs to us because now we have to haul the material. But, but we'd like to explore getting rid of those dumpsters if, if it works out coming in at, as welcoming you to Hampton coming in from the south. And uh, also um, uh, we have received complaints in the past about seagulls and uh, smell and things like that with those sitting in, in the park. So as you recall, we used to take the beach rakings and put them all with the rest, with all of the trash. Right. But we understood that it was creating problems for the equipment and wearing out the equipment. And so we said, okay, we won't bring the, we agree we won't bring the beach rakings to the, trans to the transfer station anymore. We'll, we'll take <laughs> care of it in a dumpster. Um, but we would like to explore, and we'll pick up all the costs associated with doing this. If you can just give us a space at the transfer station to put, to put these dumpsters and then the, you know, the, who are we using? Waste management? Uh, uh, yeah, I believe so. Could, could then, you know, come in and pick them up and um, take them and dispose of them there. Do we have room in the public works yard? For well, a couple of things came up when we, we discussed this, and I know we never got to the end of the discussion, but uh, one of the things was that uh, there needed to be, because you're going to build a facility, there needed to be permanent easements granted by the town over the, over the transfer facility for the construction work. Mm -hmm. uh, and the selectmen had rejected that idea because they didn't want easements on top of that property. It's, it's too fluid. There's too many things going on and too many things change during the course of the year. So we'd have to work on something, uh, try to work out something in order to get that done. Yeah, we, we don't we want a permanent right to do it. If you guys decide it's not working for the town, we would say we'll go back and put the units back at South Beach. Yeah. So we're not looking for any permanent rights on town property. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure why that requirement, but if you're willing. That to, requirement was requested by the Attorney General's office. Yeah, okay, well we can look into Because that. of the investment that had to be put into the system. Yeah, it, well we can look at the amount of investment and then determine if it's still necessary to have that. Yeah, um, it's still something in discussion. Yeah, if it's part of an agreement, it might be something we would want to enter an agreement for more than just one year for just a few years in order to be able to do it. And, uh, but I think it would benefit both us and it would benefit the neighbors, it would benefit the visitors to get to, to find a place for those dumpsters. Jim. Well, yeah, I mean, it'd be better than having it when people arrive in town, yes? It, it would, uh, we just transported the seagulls to a different location. But it would be a location where, <laughs> without a lot of people around. Well, except for the neighbors who complained about, about the smell right. with the facility down there, too. Really should take there's a good there's no convenient look location for this material is the problem. There it was. Yeah. It's my understanding that all of the other state parks have roll-offs on their own property and are not dependent upon the communities in which the state parks are located that private haulers just come and take it away. Is that the um, method of disposing of the waste in the other state parks? Don't yeah. our, doesn't our staff does our staff take the waste from? We we have um, roll -off. dumpsters. We have dumpsters that, yeah. yeah, that okay. locations, yeah. right. Some this far exceeds dumpster capa dumpster yeah. capacity. Yeah. There's no question about that. And you have sand that's mixed in with this material. It's less than it was before. Um, we the, the arrangement before was that you would bring the material to the transfer station, it would be piled, it and was. then once a year mm. we would hire a company to come in and sift the material, remove all the sand, and take the hard material and run it through the transfer station and charge you the actual cost of tipping. Um, that's I don't know if that, that wasn't really a viable operation right. from our standpoint because it tied up so much of the land that was down there. Uh, I'm not sure how we can finesse that so that something can happen. Maybe it's, and I think part of the problem there was the amount of sand that was mixed in. This was before you had your new machinery. And we'll have to take a look at how much sand there is there. Maybe, maybe there's not much and we can just tip the whole thing in the transfer station and get rid of it. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I'm not, I, yes, I mean, we just want to, um, we, we need your help to get those dumpsters off of South Beach. That's, that's what we're asking for. 
the, we're perfectly willing to explore any number of options to make that happen and yeah. make reasonable investments to make it happen. But we, we, just, we just need your help. Right now, the, the, um, uh, the agreement says the town shall allow uh, uh, two thirty-yard dumpsters. So that language would needs that language is no longer true, at least on my page four. Right. Um, so we need to change something to the effect that the town will explore with, you know, DNCR or parks, whatever we're using for the with DNCR, the um, uh, the uh, the the disposal of uh, the beach rakings at the transfer station. Something along those lines, so that it's it's if if the um, if the town staff needs direction from the select board to follow up on that and work on a solution, then they can they can do that and come back to you with here's what we've come up with. Regina, I just want to say that I agree with Mr. Bryce because the complaints are not just coming from you said you have them over at the state park; they're also from White's Island. I mean, I'm not sure how long you have been doing that, but. Our, neighbor, our own residents and neighborhood down there is not happy with yeah. the seagulls and the trash and the smell. So I think if it's something that we can work out for both sides, it will definitely be beneficial. I think we have a consensus. Yeah. I agree with, I agree that. No. Try to work it out. Yeah, that we yeah. have the staff work with the state on well, that, put that, le that language in the agreement. I'm not through yet. Well, well we have a consensus. Why can you I better not see beach rakings on the public works land anymore. All right, so we'll, uh, like you said, wait a minute. Gonna, wait a well, minute. We now, can you not hire a disposal <coughs> company? We already have, have your roll off. Didn't we already have a consensus that we talked talk about? I'm not interested. On. I want to be able to we speak. Have a consensus. I'm sitting here. We move on. You can have a consensus until your ears fall off. We but are. I'm not going to stop talking on this subject because well, I am. I have some well, questions. Roll it if, up pretty quick. If you, you should have room on your property for roll offs. What is the problem with taking hiring a contractor? And having him pull those roll-offs out and replace them with clean ones, and have it bring him bring the refuse to a waste facility. That's what we're doing now. But the roll-offs need to sit in the park for a period of time um, while they get filled up, and that's when we get the smell and the the seagull problem. So that's that's what we're doing. We're not asking to pile. We're not asking for any particular solution, including piling the material at the transfer station we're just looking for a solution mm -hmm. the solution we came up with a couple of years ago that we were talking about or that was actually agreed to in 2016 was to allow us to park uh, a couple of 30 yard dumpsters at the transfer station and we'd like to explore something like that or something similar that allows allows us not to have the dumpsters parked at the state park. So what, is, what, what, what do is, you do at the other state move parks? The subject. Well, so no, what happens at the other state parks? We are talking about the Hampton State Park, and, and we are going to agreed. move along. We have a consensus of the board that we will look at it and see if we can do something to, to work on that. So, next part is municipal sewer connections and billings. Yeah, That's working just fine. We uh, we we received their their water meter readings, and it, it dovetails with the amount of material coming up, approximately material coming down through the sewer lines, and we have an agreement that we'll bill in accordance with that. The the only water that can go through that system is from the municipal water system or mm -hmm. Aquarian's water system. So that's pretty well balanced, and we send regular bills to the state, and the state pays them. Okay, lifeguard. Any any issues with that? We don't have lifeguards on town um, beaches because we haven't been able to hire any. I think the state has already had their problems trying to fill up their quota as well. I see the postings. I, mm -hmm. I think yeah. I mean we're, we 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 were okay last year and we're putting uh, more and more effort into recruitment. Um, we as you know we started uh, we we went to the. Um, Rather than Red Cross, we went to the United States Life Saving Association (USLA), which is yeah. more conducive to ocean um, rescues and also allows us to train staff ourselves rather than relying on somebody else to do it. 
and we're very pleased with the professionalism of that staff. As I understand it, we've agreed to post two lifeguards, um, you know, as mm -hmm. obviously is available in conjunction with the shift on the town beach, mm -hmm. because it, it's awkward for us to have lifeguards on either side of that and have something happen there. We prefer to have the whole beach covered. So I think we've agreed to post those post those um is that in the Whites Island area or yes. yeah yeah post those staff at that at that section of the beach even though it's town beach in order to have full coverage of, of uh you know all the way um the full length from the jetty Mayor Lewis. Uh, uh, something Fred said made me uh think about this there's word going around down at the beach that you're trying to hire lifeguards from China uh, well, I didn't make it up no, um, we're actually hiring our uh, J J1s. Yeah, they are coming from China, but primarily for the, the custodial crew. Primarily for what? The custodial crew. The custodial crew. Clean up yeah. people. Maintenance. Lifeguards? Maintenance people. No, no, no lifeguards. Oh, I'm talking about, no, I'm and saying. So they just said no, they're not. No, we have, them. We have not hired producers. any lifeguards. Okay from out of the okay. country. But if you could, one, you might. One thing on the lifeguard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. that's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. And it's no big deal. And I'd like to say right. something. They'd be just yeah. as qualified as anybody else, right? If they, yeah, yes. if they pass I the certification. Right. They pass the certification and are willing to go through the training and stay in shape right. and <laughs> happy so to have them. Right. We are happy to have them. I yep. just want to say one comment. You mentioned the lifeguards down at White's Island, which you've had down there for as long as I can remember. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yep. Um, Glad to do it. Yeah, I just wanted to say that when I went to Bar Harbor, almost everyone there was Chinese. <laughs> and I was under the impression that that was the cream of the crop, and that's what they were paying them more to have. I, I just thought it was an interesting rumor. I'm, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, I have one more thing here. Is this on the lifeguards? No, well, it's on water and water rescue. Our fire department, especially our fire department, is running a boat and an inflatable and doing water rescues. Are we getting any compensation for the Hampton Fire Department for their service on your beach for drowning and drowning and they are responding both in the river and in the ocean for potential and, drowning and, and drowning. that's right and that's what they're trained to do and that has nothing to do with this JOP though. Why not? Because we're, we're talking about lifeguards and lifeguards are a different thing than than the boat rescues. But because the state park is there, our fire department is and responding. because we are on the ocean, we have some responsibility water also. Water rescues. In the river and everything else, so. Well. It's not lifeguards. <clears throat> uh, police patrols on the beach. Is there any problem with that part of it? Well, we could only, we can only, um, do on the beach what what uh, the department asked us to. It's state property. Uh, you ask us you, if you have a problem, you always call and ask for assistance, and we, we provide it. We're yes, we, we very much appreciate the relationship <clears throat> between all the departments, but in particular the police department and working with our lifeguards to maintain order on the beach because nobody's going to want to come to the beach unless mm -hmm. that order is maintained. I think we have a, uh, because of the deed, we have a, special relationship with the town in Hampton and that it does have rights to enforce um, uh, um, our rules on the beach and actually keeps all the fines associated with that enforcement. Where and so we, I would just anticipate that that would continue as it has for the last um, number of years. If you need mm -hmm. details on that, I'm sure we can get them, but you know, we think that part of the beach operations has worked very well and are in, you know, we're in, myself included, are in regular contact with the chief to make sure that we're um, meeting his requests and doing what we can to help him do his job. It's a state beach, where are the state police? State police are down here when they, when they come, just like they have been for many Every years. Every day? Where they, like they have been for many years. All right, I'm just asking. Uh, Video surveillance of the beach, there's nothing there, I don't believe, is there? No. Use of facilities by the fire and police, is there That's any? not a problem. Okay. Fireworks displays. That's regulated by the fire department and the state fire marshal's office. All right. Parking for de dreads employees. Uh, do we 
streets still through the ch Church Street lot? We have not been because everything's been under construction down there for a number of years, so we haven't had any space to give anybody at the Church Street parking lot, and probably we may not have it this year either. So it's just a matter of there's too much construction going on. Hmm. Okay. So where is that Church Street the lot? Church Street, the Church lot. Street lot on page eight. Eight. Ooh, my goodness. I only got page seven, so. Yeah, I don't have a page in there. Um, Roman nine. Right at the bottom. If you go down there, there right now, there are there's mountains of material down there from all the excavation we've been doing for those sewer lines. So uh, until that's all cleaned up, which will be some hopefully this summer, um, it all goes well. Yeah, well, we're somehow we go from page six to seven, and we're missing that section in this version. So, uh, but anyway, we'll. So, what do we want to do? Delete the Church Street lot, or leave that in there as available, as may be available, or how would you like? I think to it's as that? as may as, be available. As may be available. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then it goes on to fees for dread facilities by the town of Hampton. Um, mm -hmm. Use of the facilities. Uh, has there been any problem with this, Fred? Or? No. Um, in most cases, they don't charge us for use of the facilities. Uh, they do have one special event, the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> which seems to be our biggest draw for certain portions of the year. We have a lot of fa fans come down there for that. Good. But, uh, they, they don't charge us for that. And if, if we need something special, there is a charge of $15 an hour to accommodate uh, the use of the interior of their facilities down there. Okay. But often we have staff around, so that right. doesn't become an issue. Right. So. right. It's just, I think that's yeah. when it's when you have to hire staff to come hours. in on extra hours yeah. and things of that nature for something special. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, we've worked through most of those problems. So, the next one is parking of town vehicles on official business. So, you guys aren't going to charge us for parking meters for town vehicles on yeah. official business. As long as it deals with the business between the town and the state, we don't get charged for right. it. Right. Is there anything else that we? Mary Louise? Yes, I want to backtrack to Fred's letter because I'd like better clarification of April 24, 2017. On page two, once again referring to the horses on the beach and they're uh, defecating on the beach. What's going to happen there? Are we going to restrict horses, uh, not counting the Hampton Mounted Patrol? Are we going to keep horses off the beach? In terms of the town beach, that's entirely your decision. In right. terms of the state beach, our current rules mm -hmm. uh, allow for horses to be on the beach for um, from uh, what is it uh, October first through April thirtieth, I think. Yeah. So we would have to go through rulemaking and uh, receive public comment. And so, um, and if you want, if you would like more information about that, I would, um, I can put you in folks in co with fo in contact with folks in the equestrian community to give you information about that um, yeah. because that did come up when we did the rulemaking last time. Uh, questions about that, and um, we ended up continuing to allow the uh, horses on the beach. We do require them to clean up uh, uh -huh. in the parking lots and um, uh, where, where people congregate, but on the beach, uh, uh, no, so. That's where I think we get most of our complaints is, we realize that you allow the equestrian units in there, and uh, riding a horse on the beach is, is pretty nice. I know we used to do it all the time too. Um, the problem is that when people come to use the beach and there are horse droppings all over the beach because of the number of horses that are there and it's mm -hmm. in the water, as well, that people get kind of upset about that. Mm -hmm. That's why it was brought up. Yeah. I think that needs to be clarified. Jim? If I could speak, you know. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I think that's a problem. I mean, because, you know, we, we, we don't let people walk, the, I mean, the dog's on the beach, and we, we scream at people about picking up the refuge. Right. 
I mean, all the time. And then you get a horse on the beach, it <laughs> makes it much more of a mess. And, you know, I, I know it's great, but I, I think that's something that really should be addressed. Yeah. Really should be addressed because, I mean, I scream at people with their dogs, <gasps> yeah. you know, and. It, yeah, I, 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 we just had a, there was a, a bill in the legislature to um, uh, make uh, equestrians clean up on all the trails and um, our position, you know, one of the things to recognize is that dog waste and equestrian waste are two different things. <laughs> They're completely different. And um, so, uh, especially if you have a garden, you're well aware of that. And um, so, um, uh, I, I'll, I'll give this some thought. I think there's going to be um, a lot of communication with folks in the equestrian community because it is such a unique experience and talk to them about is there a way it police appears that there's themselves. getting pardon to police themselves well it, you know is there a way because if it is becoming very concentrated and there's a lot of use it's it's not like it's a 25 mile trail you know we could ask mm -hmm. them can we here here's the concerns we're receiving is there something we can do so that when people come to the the beach they're not you know they're not having a bad experience in the off season when you're riding mm -hmm. so we'll we'll start that conversation and um, and then um, and then go from there. Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to say that in the past when we've talked about that, that is exactly what the answer seemed to be the last time was that it's not the same type of waste. It breaks down quickly, and um, that seems to be where the state was coming from the last time, yep. and uh, it seemed to work out. But I don't remember there being concentrations of it. It depends on who comes, and, and <laughs> there are free, now and then we have four or five horses on the beach, and they're usually spread out pretty far. Uh, but we have had some individual situations where we've had ten or twelve horses on the beach, and they're riding together. And uh, unfortunately, if they don't have a bag attached to them, mm -hmm. it goes on the ground, and people get upset about that. Or and, in the and water. He's absolutely correct that there's a difference between horse manure. <laughs> and dog droppings, a big difference. Um, basically, horses don't eat the same type of material as dogs do and cats do, mm -hmm. uh, and other animals do, so uh, there's no parasites involved uh, unless the horse is badly infected with something. There's no parasites involved with the waste that they deposit. It just is messy. Mm -hmm. So, Fred, can we... We, we hear what they've said and yeah. hear what we've had to say. Let's put something together. Put something together, talk with Public Works, see yep. about discussing the possibility of doing some sort of place for the for the uh, roll-offs at, at Public Works, see if that'll work for us. I wouldn't want to say yes yeah. to it without... Oh, I, I certainly understand. We'd appreciate it if you would look into look into that for us. Yeah. I said, just, want to, just to follow up, go back with what Charlie said earlier, uh, Charlie Preston, you know, about follow up on, on things that were said at the meeting yes. uh, in the fall that, you know, requesting of signs and they said there were going to be signs and the signs, you know, some way of communicating that follow up if somebody's waiting to, to see something they don't see that they have somebody they can talk yeah. to. You know, yeah, Meredith, I guess you're always there down the beach. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> tell Charlie yeah. to go to your office. Yes, and then we'll be having our spring meeting, and again, this is the only park we do this in the entire park system. We'll be scheduling our spring meeting here coming up, and, and yeah. certainly by then we'll have answers to all of the things that came up in the fall, and not that we were able to follow up on 100% of them, but I think because of those meetings and the feedback, we've made a better, better operation. Yeah, yeah and I'd like to say um, that I've I talk to a lot of people because I have a business and deal with people that are, live there year round, and they a lot of the people are very impressed with the meetings that you've been having. They love Meredith, by the way, especially uh, <laughs> Donna. You know who Donna is? I do. Yeah. <laughs> she raves about you, and uh, so I think a lot of people that live there are very happy with the change that's happened. Thank you. A lot of positive stuff, Regina. I just got one question: North Beach, so north of Boar's Head. What is the process? I mean, I know it used to get in the springtime, you guys would go down there and just like clean it up a little bit from getting destroyed all winter long. Is that part of the process still or? Yeah, North Beach is, 
I mean, it, we're basically in a battle with the ocean um, right. yeah. at yeah. North Beach in particular and some of our other. And, you know, like last year we lost the stairs. Mm -hmm. We got the stairs done in record time because we worked with an existing contractor that was working up in Gorham. And so we were very, we really pushed really hard to get those stairs done so they'd be available. So we're in a constant uh, uh, battle there. And, um, and again, this, this and, it's, and hopefully, knock on wood, we won't get, you know, the big storms this spring. Mm -hmm and put us behind. Um, but, um, but yeah, we, we try to get, get that. It's, it's, it is considered a little bit more than a nat of a natural beach than is Hampton Beach, which is of course raked and graded and everything right. else. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but we do know people that, you know, do enjoy using that, you know, that beach, you know, to walk on the beach down there. So is there something specific that you're looking for, I no, mean, we I just make want to make sure that you're still trying to do what you've always tried to do down there. Yes. And that, uh, yeah, the stairs were record time, and those guys did it in like hundred degree weather too. So that was pretty amazing. And we and we want to. I mean, the first thing is to make sure there's access down the stairs onto the beach, so people can safely get onto the beach. Yeah. That's one of the things. The other area that we're focusing on is going to keep the sand off the platform. <laughs> in fact, we bought tracks for a uh, for our bobcat so that we could actually do that without having to send a whole huge crew up there to shovel it by hand, because that accessibility is very important to us. So yes, no, we haven't lost sight of, of North Beach at all. Thank you very much. I have a couple of things. Um, a recent article in the Hampton Union, February 22, uh, is headlined, Selectman Open to Talks with State on Beach Costs. Then I have <laughs> Mr. Bryce's uh, <coughs> letter here to John Cloutier, um, and this uh, paragraph caught my eye. The state park system in New Hampshire is operationally self-funded, one of the only such systems in the country. The fees for park systems states that the general court does not intend that all park facilities be self-supporting. Uh, is Hampton Beach State Park the cash cow for all of the state parks? First of all, this is not, this doesn't well, have to do with the JOP. Well, we were provided with this letter, yeah, and I read it, the, the and, it's, and, and I we appreciate the letter. And we were here to discuss the, the JOP, well, and that's I, what we were here to discuss. Well, are we not supposed to be talking about parking fees and stuff to help reimburse? Did you read the letter? I have read the letter. Thank you. Okay. That, that's so, a legislative issue, isn't it? That's a legislative issue. It's not something that we can handle, not something Mr. Bryce can handle. Well, I believe. we can discuss, I would think, with our legislators. Then that's what I suggest we do. Some of them happen to be sitting in the, the audience right now. <laughs> so but it's not on the agenda tonight. But that's not on the agenda tonight. That's right. They were here to discuss the JOP. So so we'll get back to you with it. Okay. Is that okay with you? That sounds that sounds good. I want to thank you guys for coming down tonight. And guys thank and you, girls. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for your time this evening. Thank you. Good. And hopefully we'll get something out to you so, so we don't have a, a two year wait. For getting it out again that's that, that'd be great so. all righty thank you very much and we've got yeah. next ones we have up are chris jacobs dpw director and jen hale the deputy director for a departmental update Plenty to complain about. It. Thank you. Oh, we love to complain. What the heck? Absolutely. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Did the trucks come in yet? Well, why don't we wait till we find out from the report? So that's no. on the last page of the report. You always say the good news to last, so I'll start. Oh, okay. So why don't we start with the first part? It's like a magazine I read. I always start at the back. Okay. The mystery is solved. <laughs> We're informed last week that the, one of the new Mack wave trucks is, uh, collection trucks is complete. It's uh, on the road right now. And it's uh, due tomorrow in Massachusetts. One? One of them. The other one's in the paint shop. 
the sales rep is going to um, bring it up uh, either on Thursday or Friday for uh, us to ex inspect it and exchange paperwork, sign the lease documents, that sort of thing. The second truck, uh, after it's painted this week, will be down hopefully next week. So we'll get those right into, hopefully right into service. They're definitely needed. But that was my closing statement, so. so no. you nothing else to say? Well, <laughs> nothing, you know, like, and, and on a positive note, you know. Um, do we, I agree with Regina, we should never buy trucks out of the country after this. It's too much of a mess. Can we stick to the, yeah, can we go to, to the. Oh, we just mentioned the mess. Let's just go to the report, report, please. Thank okay. you. And just to dissuade that, it, they're Mack trucks. They're built in the United States. Right. The waste bodies we had to go through are Canadian, Labrie's. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can look. But to be honest with you, um, you know, I talked to the Mack dealer. Uh, the plant that they have produces 147 trucks a day, and their their eight they have their lead time is eight and nine months on a truck. So the majority of the time was actually Mack trucks. The shorter window, probably two months, was Labrie. So okay. I, you know, I, I don't want to dis okay. our friends to the north to, to get their reputation that you know it's somehow lacking in service. It, it was not. It just uh, we don't want to get mad at Canada. No, God. <laughs> sure. no. Yeah. Um, going? Okay. So uh, I'm not aware of any, uh, uh, normally I, I start off with new hires and, you know, changes in personnel. I'm not aware at this point of anybody that's officially wanting uh, to retire. There's a number of people I know that are considering it, looking at it. We go through this every year, but I, we don't know of anyone. Uh, our recent promotions, though, is Chris McGinnis is promoted uh, to the highway foreman. He took over for a gentleman that left during the summer. Uh, he's working out really well. And uh, what? This one, that was Oh yeah, mm -hmm. see, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's he's working out really, really well. Um, not only uh, has he embraced the, if you will, the duties, but already he's had a number of uh, challenges, uh, um, issues come up with with the staff, and uh, he's handled them and handled them uh, amazingly well. So I can't say enough about this young man. Um, as you know, it's Teresa's son. Teresa was our operations quarter for coordinator for a number of years um, so he's doing really really well and the next part of this is Jennifer going over projects so I'll let you go with that all right basically uh, starting with the Lafayette Road drainage uh, project we have been working with uh, the engineers to develop the drainage replacement plan as well as go through the cost um, preliminary cost analysis for what we'll be able to do with sidewalks signage uh, the repaving um, I'd like to set a um, one of the public hearing meetings with the businesses uptown uh, as well as any of the residents and any members of the board who would like to come we have developed sort of a rollout plan of mm -hmm. slight things that uh, we're looking to change uh, for the better places to put in crosswalks more ADA um, that type of stuff as well as go over the drainage uh, component of it uh, hoping to do that uh, the second week in March uh, and then from there, be able to finalize the design and get uh, that project ready for bid. Um, similar to all the other components of the Lafayette Road project, we would look again to do this as night work. Um, just, it's yeah. too busy to do during the day. I mean, you're talking about um, the drainage from basically uh, High Street to Winnicott Road. So. Um, with that all said and done, it would be spring construction. We would not work through the summer, similar to, uh, to what we've done in the past, and then resume in the fall uh, with any type of final uh, treatments occurring in the spring the following year, making sure that we let those trenches settle uh, so we don't have any freeze thaw issues um, once the drainage is put in. Uh, with that said, our next project. Um, <coughs> Mr. Chair, may we ask a couple of questions can section we, by section? Because I, I just have a, a question. Well, uh, if we this. could let them go through the whole thing, and then when you have questions, ah. just you know, write them down. We'll bring them up. Oh, all right. So, all right. Uh, the next project was Mill Palm Dam. Uh, this project is uh, substantially complete. Uh, basically, the dam is in. It is operational. Um, the snow is covered the areas that we need to finish, which are the loam and some of the treatments on the abutter property and uh, pulling that all back together. 
uh, but overall, uh, the project itself uh, went to, well. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, Ansley and sewer replacement. Uh, I did send out a memo to the board, uh, I believe a week or so ago, there was uh, some concern about uh, people and some drainage. Yeah. Um, Water. That road is not the final uh, elevation. Good. So there will be more, um, there's top coat that's gonna go on to any of the potholes that have opened up will be cut out. That is strictly just base material. That was left that way, just for what I was saying before, mm -hmm. um, the freeze thaw. Those were trenches that went in. They went in fairly deep. You want to make sure all that settles before we do it. Uh, with that being said, there are some areas along that roadway uh, that because the owners or the residents have properties that are lower than the road, that's where the road drainage goes. Mm -hmm. So um, I really, I, I don't want anybody, like any misconceptions that, you know, you'll never see water out that way. Um, some of the homeowners may need to do some work on their properties, but as I said in my email to all of you, and I'll say it here, that to please reach out to DPW and we'll see what we can do uh, together. We are making some additional uh, modifications in the spring to the end of Dearborn. Uh, right on the end there where the sidewalk ends, there's a big ponding that's occurring, so we've decided that we're gonna put in another infiltration unit there, uh, and also the same uh, at the end of Ann's Terrace. Um, so it actually worked out well that we got to see it all in operation um, so we could see where else uh, needed some work. So uh, the goal there will be to have that all wrapped up uh, by Memorial Day. Our asset management software, we continue to use it. We That's continue good. to use it daily. We use it for all aspects uh, pretty much. Uh, Chris McInnes has um, taken it on full-fledged to start using it uh, with our highway department. Uh, which has been a great uh, tool uh, instead of us printing paper, sticking it to a board with a needle, waiting for him to come in, come out. Um, it's an instantaneous system and we can follow it uh, so Chris and I don't have to uh, track down what's going on. Uh, we continue to use it to track uh, any calls or requests that come in that includes the potholes, uh, repairs, branches down, our daily operations. So. Um, that's from a highway standpoint, but we also use it for much of our maintenance uh, sewer and drain. So part of our operations in cleaning sewers, cleaning drains, uh, doing inspections to make sure that things are not clogged or <coughs> broken, uh, that's also all tracked uh, through this asset management software. So uh, we're looking forward to just continually growing the system, uh, as is uh, the staff that has uh, truly supported it. Uh, let's see what else is on here. The grist mill renovation. Uh, this is a project that was a Warren article, I think, for two years back now. Um, we do have a quote from Power Builders to repair the roof. Uh, so our goal here was to get the dam up and operational, get everything done, and then they can come in and do the roof on the actual building. Uh, so that will actually um, tie up all the loose ends as it relates uh, to the Mill Pond Dam. Fred and I have also agreed that uh, the, con uh, the contract approval for that uh, will wait till March 25th after the town election to see what we have for a budget because uh, I, I intended to use a portion of my building fund uh, to complete the work. So get it done once right rather than twice or drag the project out over years. But, go ahead. All right. Uh, Church Street Force Main relocation. The force mains, the dual two 16-inch force mains, are all in. Uh, the gravity line is in all the way across the Mason easement, along with the structures down Tidemall Road through our transfer station up to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, all the sewer, with the exception of four sewer manholes or junctions, uh, have been tested. Uh, those last four can't be tested until we get some uh, bypass switching over. So that's what we're in the process of doing now. Um, if you come down to our facility, you'll start seeing the larger pipes and the larger pumps, and that's so that we can switch over uh, the old sewer um, that used to go through Tide Mill to the new sewer. Uh, we'll then complete the services and uh, hook it up at the pump station end and then put the bridge in. Uh, the bridge right now, I know I saved the best for last. <laughs> the bridge right now is uh, approved. It is on order. It's an eight to 12 week lead time. This is exactly what we expected when it happened because uh, we had to go through all the structural calculations, get it approved, 
et cetera. So we're still shooting for a before Memorial Day to be online, active, New Forest Mains. Uh, I will commend Rivoli. <coughs> Although it's choppy, and I know we've heard a lot of complaints down on Church Street, we're just not done, but the Force Mains are in. So um, mm. mission almost accomplished. Uh, let's see, what else have we been working on? Uh, our wastewater treatment plant facility upgrades. We have met multiple times with uh, Wright Pierce going through each of the phase one uh, improvements as it was proposed for, I believe it was seven or nine uh, different sections of critical need up at the plant. As of yesterday, or was it today? I'm confused now, but we have our preliminary design report in. Um, so that is the full report of all the components. Uh, they are the preliminary plans. They have been sent to DES as well as ourselves for review as it will take both uh, because it's CR, uh, CW SRF uh, funding. Uh, so everybody will take a look at it and we'll be sharing it with the board as well. Um, when I say we got it today, yep, we got it. I have not even had two seconds <laughs> to open it, um, but it was received today. Good. Um, with that, that's the summary of the larger stuff we've been working on, and uh, Chris will finish up. Under highway, um, both of the flash and crosswalk signs are, are operational. Um, again, we'd, the department would be looking for some feedback from people if uh, they like them, they don't like them, uh, if oh, they see good. if they're being used, whatever. Um, we, you know, always always looking for on something new like that. Always looking for input. Um, as you know, pothole season is just around the corner. Um, we did hold off last year with our crack sealing uh, contractor. They're going to be out uh, for when weather does break, probably after, I would say, after April 30th. They'll be doing the Winnicott Road, High Street areas, and Toll Farm Road uh, for crack sealing. But uh, again, um, also, well, uh, if people, as they notice some of these defects uh, come up, please just, you know, give us a call. And even if you think somebody else has called, um, go ahead and still call. Um, it lets us know where the uh, tension needs to happen. Every year we're looking to see uh, which road doesn't make it through frost season. And um, uh, I think we're turning a corner weather-wise, but the last time I said that, <coughs> It was a very snowy March, so I won't say that. Uh, wastewater operations. Um, summary for last year. Uh, we were up uh, over 1,000 million gallons, 1,017 million gallons. Uh, it's a 10% increase over what uh, the plant processed in 17. Uh, I want to be clear that it was not due to a building boom or a lot of new houses coming in, or uh, it was due to uh, we had uh, we've been tracking rainfall and rainfall and infiltration related to rainfall. August, October, and November were uh, rather large months, um, so that's what contributed to the extra 100 million gallons over those several months. Mm. Um, also, in it's clear to point out that it's not, it was not waste because it didn't result in any more sludge being developed or, or produced at the plant. Uh, the number, of the sludge tonnage only changed by one ton over a whole year. Uh, we went from, uh, we were 2,995 tons this year, we were 2,996 last year. It's, purely coincidental but the point is that uh, uh, it, it further supports the fact that it was infiltration and we're going to need to address that in the future uh, septage at the plant that's uh, people septic tanks uh, RVs things of that nature uh, it went down by 9% we're only at 1.9 million gallons this year uh, the previous year we were 2 million and 93 thousand gallons yeah. uh, the decrease was due to um, Epping's wastewater treatment plant had a, uh, they had to do a facilities upgrade. Uh, they couldn't accept uh, uh, septage waste last year, seven, the summer of 17. They were back online later in the year, um, and that's why we're, we saw the decrease in the total amount of septage. Um, the other thing I'd like to keep at your attention is our wastewater permit. Um, 
the last permit that we had from the EPA for this plant was 2007. Um, we've, we're seeing a change at the state level um, with this gentleman, Alexis Rastagayoff, and others that um, it looks like in the future the permit will be issued, but it may be issued more by the state, less by the EPA. So it's kind of a shift. Um, uh, don't think that we're in violation because we don't have what we call an active or standing permit. Um, we just oper we continue to operate at their uh, leisure under the uh, last permit in 2007. Um, finest kind brewing um, is something that um, has always been a matter of interest to people. Mm -hmm. uh, we did meet with them earlier this year. They're getting ready to install uh, two digesters. Uh, to pre-treat their waste to reduce the BOD and suspended solids uh, prior to it entering in the town's collection system. Uh, I know they've made application to the planning board for it to be on the agenda for March um, because the addition of the four um, digesters were not previously shown on other plans. It's mm -hmm. going to be in the back side of their site. It's not going to be visible from the road. Um, and yes, let me be clear, they're, they're, for the planning board, they're re requesting or showing four um, digesters, but they're only installing two at this time, hmm. only because the current amount of beer that they brew, uh, they only required at this point to get two of the four digesters installed. Um, again, the state's been involved in all these discussions. Um, they're in support of it, and um, it looks like um, after the March planning board sometime in April or May, they're going to actually be installing this equipment. So we're going to see a um, decreased um, load coming from them as far as BOD. Uh, with every one of these upgrades, yes, we do end up issuing a new uh, industrial discharge permit. Um, Take this next one. Transfer station, go for it. Sure. Uh, the transfer station operations and recycling, uh, Fred alluded to it earlier. Uh, that we had another series of audits done on our recycling waste. That audit uh, increased our amount of contamination uh, that is being brought over and thus uh, we're now being charged $185 a ton uh, per the percentage of contaminated waste. Uh, we met with waste management last week. Uh, from there we met with uh, Ryan Sharp, the foreman. Uh, in working with them there is an education component that really has to happen. It's not as simple as just throwing it in the trash. Um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions that have happened over the years of what is recyclable, what isn't recyclable. Uh, waste management has done a uh, basic overhaul of their educational program. Uh, recycle right, recycle often. Uh, that is the new language. It's basically keep those plastic bags out of the garbage. If it's dirty, it's not recyclable. Um, and if you're hesitating, then throw it away. Um, it, it's a we, reworking of um, the mentality of why we recycle <coughs> in the first place. Um, so with that said, similar to when we were here a year and a half ago now probably, uh, we talked about educating uh, the public on our needs for the wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. We did a mailer, we did a social media, uh, we put together videos, we redid our website. Um, so in meeting with Ryan last week, we came up with an outline uh, to do exactly that. What can we do um, to really t make it so one, we're not paying 130000 that wasn't part of our budget in uh, contaminated recycling fees, mm -hmm. but to do what's right uh, and, and sort of put together this re-education plan. So that's something that uh, we'll be working on over the next month. Um, we're hoping that maybe even an intern from uh, marketing program up at UNH to help us out. Uh, waste management has come in. They have offered us a whole bunch of things. Um, our guys will be out there stickering carts. Um, they will have stickers. Um, we've got a printout of them, you know, that basically is very, very simple. It will say right on the sticker what should be going in your recycling bin so that you're not second guessing it. Um, getting out there right now and understanding you know, think outside the plastic bag. Plastic bags do not go in your recycling bin. Right. Just they do not go, they do not go. And, and the more of these things that we can, uh, you know, get out there and get the word out there, um, it, it's only better for us. 
the, uh, the last inspection report that we got back from them is um, that they're getting whole bags of recyclable materials mm -hmm. still in plastic bags. Good. The message is they want it loose like this inside the cart. Yeah. So if people have, you know, I do the same thing. I've got a trash can liner, if you will, for the recycling container in, mm -hmm. my, in our kitchen. What they want the public to do is to take that bag outside, dump it in your cart, <laughs> dump the material in the cart, reuse the plastic bag, mm. the trash can liner. They yeah. don't want the trash can liners. They don't want the Hannaford bags, the Walmart little, you yeah. know, the logo bags. Because what they do mm. is um, that is the, what they consider the contamination, it mucks up their plant, yeah. for lack yeah. of a better term. Good. So we need it loose. So that is the goal um, with the recycling, is to sort of put a whole new push to um, really get back down to the nitty gritty of why we're doing the recycling in the first place. It's not wrong to recycle, but you have to recycle right. Is that it? That's it. That's it. That's enough. Okay. Do you want me to go through one by one, or you how do you? what the questions you have. Okay. Uh, the uh, drainage and sidewalk uh, replacement um, on Route 1. Mm -hmm. Now, remember when we all got excited about ornamental lighting? Now, but we're going to be doing the new LED lighting. Correct. So that will have no impact, any impact, on what you're doing with Route 1. So the poles along Route 1 now that have what you consider the big lights on them. So mm -hmm. if you're looking up and you see one of the Unitil current lights, yep. all pending a positive successful vote in March, those would be replaced with LED. So you don't have to do any digging, any underground Absolutely wires? Absolutely not going to say that quite yet. Oh. Because there uh -oh. would be and could be reasons to want other conduits, whether we put the light in or not. So say you come down between the high street parking lot. Yep to Greg's where they did the walkway and you have mm -hmm. those decorative lighting. Yep. When we roll out this plan, and I do hope that you come and you see that we're trying to recenter where the pedestrian access is. We're mm -hmm. trying to recenter where the safety components are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there is a need for additional lighting that isn't 40 feet up in the air, but we could do something down there. And that's why we had always used the word decorative light. Um, it caused a lot of anguish. I will never use it again. I have to come up with a new way of like, describing it. But the idea here is that we're doing a drainage project, mm -hmm. that we are redoing sidewalks for ADA mm -hmm. along with the curbing, yeah. getting a paved road surface right. that is from top to bottom, signage, crosswalks, striping, yeah. potential areas where there could be trees, uh, and improvements by removing pavement, drainage improvements in the high street parking lot and if there's any money left over <laughs> that is something we're going to look at because although you may not like it there have been many many others that have did it so i do want to hear what everybody has to think about what we have i just want to make sure you have what you need and you can get exactly the and that's done. why there was a whole train of things yeah and so we don't have a bunch of people there. growling because they can't go down route one so it'll be this year and Nope. nope, it will be this year. Final, final paving will be in 2020. Okay. Well, as long as we have an idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then next on Mill Pond Dam, you said construction is substantially complete. You know we're having a problem with the subcontractors getting paid. Are you going to need subcontractors for doing the, the loaming and seeding? And so the work that is left to be done yeah. will be subcontracted out be through a contract with the town of Hampton. And this is something that we are working with the um, bond company and the attorneys and that I don't suspect there are any issues. The amount of work that is left compared to the project as a whole is that big. And it involves people that have been very patient and a lot of people have been supportive of this project so I don't, I want it to still be a very positive project. The job that was done there was done very well. Good. I was just a little concerned, you know, with and we're And we are fully taking care of that. Yeah, okay. And the asset management software, what you showed us of that last year looks really good. So mm -hmm. it's, you seem to be 
taking advantage of it and, and getting some help mm -hmm. uh, with it. Um, then on the see, Church Street for, um, Force Maid, I have been a chicken this winter. I haven't tried going down to the transfer station. Can I get down Hard Arts Way and get into the transfer station now without any? One hundred percent. All right, that sounds good. Uh, then on um, the wastewater treatment plant facility upgrades, I think we've all kind of been waiting with bated breath for that because that's the first what eight point nine million. Eleven point seven. Yeah, yeah, that we're. So now we're really going to start getting into it and start going for the yes. upgrades. That's good. Um, I want to be clear, we're not going to release, probably not going to release all the money in one contract. Right. It'll be done in... But you're starting to dip into yes. that nice right. bond right. that we can get something done with. Yep. I'm not even going to say anything about potholes. They drive me crazy. Um, let's see. Just mill. I had a couple of other quick, and thank you, because this is a great report, by the way. On the finest kind brewing, the digesters are what you need. Now, it talks about two here, but you need four to complete the whole process. Will that take away the burden of, of the processing uh, outcome at that brewery? The finest kind brewing need currently two digesters to meet our discharge permit right if they intend to brew more uh, product in the future okay they need to put in the other two uh, digesters but it currently they don't have approval from us or the state to basically double or triple their their okay. capacity okay but, but at the, least there's a start oh definitely yes okay that looks good and I'll look forward to seeing that on the planning board and the um, and you read my mind, Jen, because I was hoping to get some kind of stickers or something and maybe pass outs uh, near the town clerk's office and something upstairs so people coming in and out can be advised on exactly what is okay for recyclables mm -hmm. and the rest stuff trash. Right. Okay, that's good. Thank you so much. I like this report. Okay. Um, thank you. You actually, this report summarized most of my questions, yep. but yep. on the uh, great report, and really thank you for all the projects you have going on <laughs> and the status of completion on them with what you have to work for, and I hope the voters realize that the equipment you asked for is needed, so I hope they see that when they vote in March. Yep. And also, for the, waste, for the marsh pipes, actually, I've been getting a lot of questions about I think that what Church Street was before and what it is now is a significant improvement. I think it looks really good. Um, I haven't been down to the transfer station, but I'm sure it's the same case over there. But I'm getting questions again on the temporary pipe and why it was needed. Could you maybe just explain that so that the public can understand? Well, and, and we're not over the hump. Right. Mm. Let's go back 11 months ago, uh, first week of March. Yeah. We got drilled last March with, for three big coastal high tide yep. and um, what results in high infiltration into the plant. With the one pipe that we have functional, the possibility exists that we would not be able to handle the flow. So you needed the second you needed that bypass pipe to, well, and the state wanted us to have the bypass pipe to have a reasonable surety that we could handle anything thrown against us while we get this other one in. Um, so and in the event of anything happening right. to that singular yeah, pipe left right. in the marsh. Yeah. Now, yeah. you know, we've had a, they've been actually able to, I'm amazed that they're at the point there, Rivoli is with the installation. If this had been, if let's say we'd had a worse winter with another 60, 70 inches of snow. I mean, remember the winter of 14, 15, we had an excess of 120 inches of snow. We couldn't have done this project this winter under those conditions. Right. But we've had little to no snow here in Hampton in that work area, so we were able to get the job done. If we weren't able to get that job done, this project could have extended well into 
closer to the 4th of July weekend instead of being done Memorial Day weekend, like mm -hmm. it's now projected, you would have more more certainly needed and, and would have had to rely on that pipe. So it, that pipe's there. It still may, may be used a lot in the next com, coming month because yeah. it was, you know, that's what happened to us last March. Yeah. We got <coughs> drilled. And the reason why we had to go and install that temporary pipe immediately was because we see how long the process is to get permits and everything. Well, yeah, we'd, and we'd always had two, right. and now we were down, you know, two straws, we were down to one. And, uh, if, and, and we were down to the older one, the 60-year-old pipe, the asphaltic cement. Um, I don't even want to guess what condition <laughs> that's in. Uh, the salt, you know, we, we always see what happens to... You know, look at the deterioration of the concrete seawall we get. This pipe that's in the ground is Eek. <laughs> asbestos cement. It's cement pipe, and it's in a saltwater environment. And I don't know as it was ever, ever intended to last this long. So um, it, that force main, in part, is a, uh, you know, at least a, the emergency one, the standby one, is uh, it's a like insurance policy, so yeah. otherwise. And we were very lucky you were able to pretty much, I mean, the majority of that construction was able to be done over the winter, yeah. which is Absolutely. amazing. And so in the, in the end result, we're probably gonna, we're gonna need that emergency pipe for a much shorter period of time than we would have in other, in, in a normal winter, mm. so. And the other question I have is, I know we have a lot of projects going on and we don't need another one right now, but as far as the current status of Bicentennial Wall, I mean, I know I was down there a couple of days ago and it seems to be working just fine, but. Bicentennial Wall, it's, it's a real conversation. Um, we have had many priorities, the wastewater treatment plant, this force main uh, situation, the engineering studies and the feasibility that we did and that we paid for to do geotechnical evaluations and actually have that concrete tested shows that it is deficient, mm -hmm. shows that it is not embedded the way it should be. Right. Uh, we are very fortunate that the armoring that was done two Januaries ago has been very successful in protecting it. Uh, we haven't lost any more of the wall. It has not gone away. Um, the problem has not gone away. Right. So not to be any type of bearer of bad news, but that's that's the reality of it. Um, it's something that uh, will need to be addressed, uh, <coughs> but we are fortunate enough that we did have the funding to do those emergency uh, armaments that did get done. Thank you. Jim. No, nothing. Sure. So has the temporary pipe, it has been used or it hasn't? The temporary pipe has been used. Um, We've had to use it when we were uh, first putting it online. Uh, we wanted to make sure one it worked. Uh, so we used it then. Uh, there was a point when we were working with the state as part of our agreements to do the testing uh, of the remaining line. Uh, we've since then not had to do that because they realized, wait, how would we do this extra pressure <laughs> on our one remaining line um, that's working? So we had used it then. Uh, from a flow standpoint, um, in its max max capacity and I don't recall no. how many times uh, it's really gone on but when we do use it uh, because it is winter we have to go through the whole process of um, putting the air through it compressing it uh, getting all the material out of it um, cleaning it yeah purging it. it's yeah. basically purging it uh, and there's one low area because it's a pipe sitting on the ground that seems to collect um, anything that remains in it and from there, we actually have to go into it, uh, open up the pipe, suck it out, and then seam it back together. So um, yeah. the best bet is to have it there for emergency purposes. Yeah, cause someone, I can't believe someone actually asked me that. How do you clean it? Yeah, I mean, we, we've had to cut it open and suck it out. I mean, in that one low spot, not the whole pipe, obviously. We should get to it. Yes. We make Chris go through it with a broom. So when you return it, you do clean it for them? <laughs> <laughs> needs to be flushed before it goes back to them. Yeah, that was the main question they asked. Yeah. yeah. I got a couple things. One is, as you talked earlier about the, the dam, the grist mill dam. Now, the subcontractors that were there, they were hired by the contractor uh -huh. originally. They weren't hired by the, the town. Correct. 
And so, but we have done everything we can to secure that they can, they're going to be made whole. Right. And I think it's really important that everybody here and anybody watching at home understands that the process that we do for projects like this is a bidding process. We have a purchasing policy. Mm -hmm. We have insurance requirements. We have bond, bond requirements, requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, not only for performance, but for payment. And this is the exact reason we have them. Uh, to show that if a situation like this happened, that we, the town, are not responsible uh, for those payments. We, we've paid, we've done our job, um, in that this is the equivalent of an insurance policy. Sometimes and, you use it. Okay, and it's sad that some of these, these subcontractors have had to wait, but they will get their money. And that is 100% that is what we've and been told. And that's why we have a bond. Yes. yes. Okay. Second thing I had was when, on the, the Route 1 project. Yes. Now we did a lot of uh, sewer and drainage, uh, mm -hmm. sewer and water lines on High Street in that short between the, t the thing. Are we planning on doing those sidewalks and the rest of the drainage there? Right now, the limits uh, for pavement and sidewalk go from the High Street lot on High Street out to Route One, mm. head south yeah. to Winnicunit, down to Park uh, Avenue. Wow. Park Avenue sidewalks do not need to be done past, um, let me say, the Walk Express, if I'm naming the right place. Um, those were all recently reported when um, Aquarian did their water line because they were under you those sidewalks. Park Avenue, you mean Toll uh, Road? No, our pavement limits will go down to Park because right. the state but the came to Park. But, but the, the sidewalk, sidewalk will end basically at Winnicott. I just want to make sure that we. We do that little section on High Street that has all, yeah. all yep. our shopping. And then a little section yeah. on Winnicunit as well. Right. And, and the other thing what you brought up was the, uh, the new crosswalk lights. Mm -hmm. They do work great, except I, I mm -hmm. sent you a message. The, the one in front of Fast Eddie's, the wind had caught it last well, week. I wondered how. And turned it. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and so I it. sent her a message. Yeah. And then <laughs> as I went outside, I went and turned it back. So it... it it's now facing the right way, but that they is They need loose. to be re-secured. Right, right. Um, that's so, something we're working on with the bolting pattern, so that if we have, now these are some of those uh, pros and cons, as Chris was mm -hmm. asking, you know, what have we learned? We've learned that the bolting pattern, although it's there, uh, we can do more on the bottom end to, to yeah. beef it up. And I'll tell you that people use those a lot. I've, I've been to both Logan's Run and seeing the people crossing over from, from uh, the Best, Best Western, Western over to there, and then, uh, at, at Fast Eddie's, the people using that there, and, and people do stop when they, they're done, so. Um, so I have One noticed. more follow-up. Uh, thank you for the trash and recycling master summary. Yep. And uh, I know we used to get this in the past, so could we get one of these like every, sure. at the end of every year or yep. whatever? Because this is very good information and I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Yes. All righty. All right. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, that'll do it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yep. Did you, did you get that video I sent you on the uh, water from Seabrook? No. Seabrook did a, a, a video similar to the one I showed you about Wyndham, and but it's on on their water system oh, and replacing the two one. power the two uh, water towers. Okay. So uh, <laughs> again, it's a it's a great way to do it, and if we can get a marketing person in to do that, and that would be our that goal. Would, absolutely. And then I will uh, drop off that other stuff in the morning. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This, this is a great r report setup, Jen. I like that. <laughs> I just added it. Well, this <laughs> this is thank this you. This is kind of neat. All righty, we'll have uh, Ed Tinker, MRI contract assessor. Well, okay. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you today? I'm good. Um, here this evening with a couple of items. Um, one being. Uh, some tax collector abatements. Uh, these are for bookkeeping purposes and typically, as you saw, we included a list of 10 properties yep. um, that have to do with changes or uh, like changes to non-taxable during the year or um, a couple of trailers or mobile homes that were not on site during the tax year. Um, the total uh, amount of those abatements are $3,952.63. If you have any questions regarding this, um, I can answer those for you. Any questions? 
so this is just for for mm -hmm. Donna to clean her books I'm, up. I'm trying to get my wrap my head around. Okay, so it has as of April first, but this is this will take place in this calendar year. Well, these were 2018 issues that had to be resolved. Uh, right. Either they were taxable on the first bill and were changed to non-taxable. Those types of things. To so we're just doing. We've just put it all together now. So yeah, we're doing for, it this for year. the for the tax collector. Okay. Right. Yep. Any questions of the board? Mm -hmm. A motion to accept the, motion the recommendations. Accept the second. And, and that's fine. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Okay. Um, second item is this year's or the 2019 sewer abatement uh, list and rate. Uh, the rate is the same as last year, 52 cents per thousand. The total refund. Um, would amount to $112,597. However, if you look at the list and when you did look at it, there are some properties that have no tax and there are also some that haven't paid yet. So that number currently yeah. isn't the 112, but that would be the maximum if all paid. And you know, more than likely they will, but at this point uh, it may be a little less, but this 112,597 would be relative to the total of the entire list. Any questions on this? I'm, I'm not sure. Which one are we looking at, Ed? You, I've got a pile the, here. The sewer, sewer abatements that we do each year? The night, uh, Land, those, rent, you know, For those folks who are not connected to sewer. Yeah. Those, the, they don't have the opportunity to be connected to sewer. See you. Oh, okay. I, that I should was be, just looking for the... It should have been a cover letter for you. This one right here. Showing the totals. Oh, I missed that. Okay. All right. So. I need a motion to accept the sewer. I'll make that motion. Right. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Anything else? Oh, oh, actually, I have a question. We can go first if you want. Yeah, the memo of February 8th, assessing pickups. How did we get 490 properties that need to be reviewed before April 1st, 2019? What? what how come these little guys didn't get picked up somewhere along the way? Um, truthfully, what took place, because we, every, every year we've had no problem picking them up, correct? This is the first year where there's been an issue of getting caught up. Okay. Um, if you go back to October of 17, um, we lost our clerk, uh, Charlene, was more so running the office yeah. and, and was unable to get out at the rate she typically got out in the field. So this is a remeasure relist? Well, it includes all the abatement, I mean, I'm sorry, all the permits from the building department. Some are just uh, minimal stuff like uh, re-roofing houses, uh, minor things like that. I believe the, the bigger items, um, although entered into the system, are the ones that currently need to be looked at, and I believe equal about 100 to 150 properties, not the 490. I believe she's actually out doing those now, the majority oh, of them. 30% of them are complete. 30% of them are completed. Yeah, Charlene has now been going out with the, with the, um, with the new clerk that's in the office now. Yeah. She's able to get out now, but there's going to be, um, I, I believe, a little over 100 that, that need to be visited for verification of measurements and attempt to get interior inspections on those. Mostly new homes or major additions, I believe. Right. And, and we're going to have this done by April, April 1st. 1. It will be done. The inspections will be done. Well, if we can't get in, we'll have to estimate based upon the, the plans that were submitted to the building department. Okay. But they will all be assessed. They'll all be assessed by April 1st. Yeah. Right. They, yeah, I believe they currently are assessed. They just need to be verified in the field. Okay. But Fred says something about $25 a piece, or what was that? I, I There's a charge of $25 a piece to get those assessments done by MRI. Oh, we're paying MRI yes, to finish this yeah. stuff and get it ready by what April Charlene 1st. What Charlene can't get done. And right. there's, a, it's, there's a little extra fee over and above the generic fee that we're giving the MRI for the year. Yes. Okay, I just yeah. want to make sure I yeah. got my head around that. Straight contract. Yeah. Okay, all right. 
Um, let's see, I had, oh, I had one, I know I have one question for Ed. Yes. Um, 20, the 19, yeah, that's, there's the. Right. 2017 mm -hmm. um, annual report. Right. I got my little yellow flag in here. Um, on page 207, it says 2017 breakdown of property valuations. Right. I don't see that in our 2018 book. I no, the 2018 would have a total property breakdown. If you remember when we did the MS1 report to the board, yeah. um, I gave you a list of uh, total value total taxable value, precinct totals, credit and exemption totals. I felt that that was a more informative thing and I have reasons to believe that to be the case based on what we, we, we I had put in the book for the past nine Oops. years. Um, if I, I do have some information here if, I, if you'd like I can give you my feelings regarding this. I, I was just kind of puzzled because I saw what you had in here, you know, for the end of the 2017 year, and it's pretty, uh, pretty good information. The breakdown of the property valuations, and you've got single-family homes, mobile homes, etc. A complete breakdown of the different types of properties. Right. Th those are actually part of the MS1 report. The, the the sheet that comes out of Vision, it goes by use codes, and they group use codes together by residential which would be single family, yeah, right. but single family isn't just single family houses. It includes seven or eight different use types. That's the issue that I feel if to include that information uh, as total, as just groups is one thing, but to try to break out single family or like, like we have single family, right? We have single family with no land. We have single family waterfront, single family right. riverfront, right. single family with multi dwellings on it. We have two families and three families. Those are all under the single family or residential line item. So to, to just say here's residential and here's single family really isn't indicating the true breakdown of those properties. Well, um, I expected to see you know something similar to the 2017. A report. So I was just sort of puzzled. As I wondered if it had just been, you know, deliberately left out or overlooked well, I didn't or deliberately something. Deliberately leave it out. I just felt that that information I put in was more informative than. Okay. It, like like this, Mary Louise. If if we were going to break out the residential and just show single family, mm. and and again, I I had a couple of uh, people a little confused by how that was done, yeah. um, because from one year to the other. It wasn't broken out exactly the same. But the thing is, we only broke out the residential single family when in reality, we should be break, if, if we want a very detailed report, yeah. um, we could break out commercial into dozens of categories. Yeah. We could break out condominium, as, as all there's a line for condominiums, that only represents residential condominiums. Yeah. We'd have to go into the commercial section to pull out the commercial condominiums to show a true indication of how many condominiums were actually mm -hmm. increased per year. I was just but kind of puzzled because I kind of expected to see the same type of report, you know, in the prior year. Right. I mean, I have to take responsibility for the breakdown of the tax rate part that's at the end of the report. Yeah. Um, although we have over 20 years of those files in our office, that, that is my fault that that's not in. I missed, missed doing that. Yeah. However, I felt the breakdown I did. Uh was something different, but something really as or more informative than what we were doing, unless, of course, we want to do a more detailed right. report. Um, and, and as you know, Charlene had done a report for you relative to yep. several years of a breakdown. Mm -hmm. From We've all, 2005. Right. That, was, yeah, those re, those, that information is very uh, informative. Okay. Um, in fact, the fire chief has been in more than once to get information regarding the precinct and, and the same type mm -hmm. of information as you know. Yeah. And Charlene just recently gave him um, all the way back to 2003, I believe, 
yeah. of MS1 totals relative to the precinct. Yeah. So he could, you know, determine Good. growth. Good. Um, well, I was just sort of puzzled, so I thought I'd ask. No, I, yeah, I mostly just have a comment that a resident asked me who's working with in the know about the veterans warrant articles. You know how they always, you know, what happens if you vote yes, what happens if you vote no. So I just want, since you were here tonight, I just wanted to let you know that, and Charlene's been very helpful, and so has in Christy, but I just want to make sure that we get them the best information. I know she's been asked by Carolyn to put this information together. Right. So as far as the effects of any exemptions, that how it would affect the town, I don't know if there's anything that maybe I should reach out to you about. The, the, the effect on the tax, on the, on the the town, the tax rate, you mean? Well, on, that on, I got, on, I got, I think rate. I got that information from Christy, but right. as far as what happens when there's an exemption, because obviously it's going to be less tax revenue that comes in, and she's trying to put that together so that when right. she explains it for the website. Yeah. Well, one thing we do, we do a, we do a, um, a total, um, what the total exemptions would be at their full value. Right. Well, I, I do this for you every year. Right, I think it's like thirty-five million or something. Right, right but, now, yeah. but but that's but then there's a taxable amount because a lot of properties are assessed less than the total um, exemption that they receive. So we do two columns: one, what it would be at its full value, and then what it what it actually is for. And at times that can be a couple million dollars difference okay. based on property values or assessments. But we, 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 we get that every, we do that every year, so we can get that for you. That's not a, yeah. that's, you know, we can. Yeah, anything you can get me that I can maybe forward over to her would be helpful yep. so she can help Carolyn prepare that. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Jim? No. Rick? Do oh. no land rent commitment? You're, yep. Do you have a supplemental warrant? Oh, yes. Do you have a, sup a supplemental warrant? I have something warrant? else. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I do have a supplemental warrant. I thought we were going to, yeah, okay. Um, what about the land rent? We did the land rent. Oh no, I'm sorry. Don't you need a signature? Do you need for the, signature you're sign? talking about the sewer payment? Well, I don't know. I got this, and we did that the, for year week. review and signature. The 2019 town owned land rent list. We did that last meeting. Last Tuesday. We did it last Monday. Yeah, last, last meeting. 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 Right. Well, we must have done it very fast. You did. You signed. Because I got this new in my pile. Oh, okay. Friday morning. Okay. As okay. long as we did it. Yeah, I, I apologize. Sorry about that. The, the um, I do also have a, a, a 2018 supplemental property tax warrant for for the board to review and sign. Hopefully, um, it has to do with. Um, well, actually, it amounts to um, fifty-seven thousand one hundred seventy-two dollars and sixty-two cents. Do we want to talk about what it's relative? It's relative to Unitel. It's relative to additions added since the last time we valued the property, which was 2016. Um, so this is what that has to do with. Did we get a copy? Can we get a copy of that? I don't know. Um, I do, have, um, and I do got, have the signing page here. And I've got leased land, lease renewals. That here. was last time, too. That was last time, I believe, also. We just did that. We did all the lease stuff. Oh, last, then I, this meeting. is my pile from Friday, so I didn't realize we had done those. Okay. So, what are you saying? This is, a, this is the reevaluation of Unitil? Um, or supplemental? Since a supplemental warrant relative to, to additions that were added to the property? Since we valued it in 2016, right. so yeah. it's increased by fifty-seven thousand tax wise, but it has increased by <laughs> value wise um, three million seven hundred eighty-two thousand eight dollars and one cent relative to additions. Right. So, so we have to do a supplemental tax warrant so we can get the taxes on that property. Okay. So I, so I apologize. We have a call. specific motion. Yeah. Or, uh, uh, we're gonna. Okay. So, Alrighty. I would say the motion is to accept the supplemental tax warrant. In the amount of $57,172.62. Right. I'll make the second one, whatever. 
And then uh, we further order to pay the monies to the treasurer of town. So just the first the first part of that motion is all you really need. Okay. You've got a motion. So I have a motion. I'll make the motion. Would you second? second. Okay. Would you just repeat the motion? Because I'm not I the haven't got a copy. The motion will be uh, a supplemental uh, property tax warrant in the amount of fifty fifty seven one hundred and seventy two and sixty two cents. Right. And that's for twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen okay. supplemental so real estate. I'll second uh, Regina. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. So you, you want us to sign this now? Yes. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll process it tomorrow. <clears throat> okay. okay, anything else? No, I just again, you know, regarding the town report, um, you know, again, it, I just felt it was better information. I mean, it, if the board decides we want to do something different, I can, I can get really detailed with stuff, which, you know, as you know, I give you that stuff quite often, and, you know, we can do that. You but to only give a small picture, I think, isn't... What we gave you is more than what that does. And that's all I'm saying. You that's just true. missed us, and you wanted to come in and say hello. Yes, sir. Yes. All righty. We're signing. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Too much paper. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, those of the, for those listening tonight, uh, if you're interested in filing a request for abatement on your 2018 property taxes, the closing date for abatement applications is March 1, 2019. You need to see the board of the assessor's office in order to get the proper paperwork to get that completed. Please remember to register to vote for the annual town election. See the town clerk's office to register. Property owners who would like to file their tax exemptions for elderly, <laughs> blind, veterans, or solar must file by April 15th, 2019. Please note that on your calendar that the annual town election is March 12th, 2019 at Winnicott High School. Polls open at 7 a.m. And for those who desire absentee ballots, please contact the town clerk's office as soon as possible. Um, there are a number of other things here. I, we talked about recycling tonight and, and uh, we're going to have a presentation by the, New, the Northeast Resource Recovery Association at your next meeting. Please ask people to listen so they'll understand what's going on in the recycling markets, not only regionally, but nationally and internationally, to give you an idea of where we are, where we're going, and hopefully what we're going to make for profits. Um, <laughs> things are changing in these markets very quickly, and it's important that people listen to what's going on so they can handle the recycling in the way that it should be handled. You're looking on the sunny side, are um, you? Oh, I'm looking at the sunny side because this means money off of your taxes. So the Potential. better we do, the less we have to pay, which right. is very, very important. <laughs> There's also going to be some public hearings on the proposed water quality standards oh. by the Department of Environmental Services. Good. The one closest to here is going to be at the NHDES P's field office, uh, room A, 222 International Drive, Suite 175 in Portsmouth, and that's going to be on March 12, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. So if you're interested in PFOAs and what the components are within the water <laughs> system that you're currently in danger of ingesting, then you need to go to this hearing and testify and give your advice to the people who uh, make up these regulations. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there's been a lot of discussion on, uh, talked about the, uh, uh, the materials that the state, as you know, there's a statute that, that's been proposed in the legislature uh, to take money back from the town yes. as far as school costs are concerned. We currently raise by taxes what's known as the state portion, which is a little over $870,000 a year. Right now, our schools retain that money and use it for education. Mm. There was a bill introduced in the legislature this year to take that money away. It's called a sweep. To take that mm. money away and give that money to the state, mm. which would deprive our educational system of almost a million dollars every year uh, and probably increase as time goes along. Yeah. We understand that that bill has now been amended by the, by the author uh, and they're asking that the bill be 
in fact, not approved by the legislature. Uh. We also understand that there is a motion afoot or a move afoot uh, to change that by, by amending a different bill to, in fact, take that money. So Good. when you're talking to our state representatives and senators, please tell them not to do that because we don't need to raise an additional $800,000 from the taxpayers of this town Good. to do um, something for the state of New Hampshire. We need to do it right here as we've been doing it. So um, we talked about PFOAs. There was an action plan. The legislature is working on that. Uh, I know we have somebody here who's working on it and has been working on it for some period of time. It's very important that we do what we need to do. So uh, please talk to your representatives about the, uh, the sweep legislation. It's important that it come from you as selectmen, not from the, uh, the rank and file of your management. Uh, they've heard from us already, and we've told them it's not something we want. Uh, but uh, it comes better uh, with more force if it comes from you as selectmen. Solid waste and recycling. Uh, you heard Jen tell us that we had an audit. Uh, the total impact uh, for that audit will be an additional charge of $133,155.60. That's estimated um, for this fiscal year. Mm. That money is not in the budget. It's not anywhere in the budget. So we need to, again, pay attention to what's going to happen on the 11th so that people understand what's going to have to happen to their recycling so that you don't have higher taxes because we don't need higher taxes. So with that, um, I would ask that uh, our, our selectmen talk to our representatives and senator and try to uh, avoid the sweep bill and uh, move on with other things that are much more important to the town. Thank you, sir. Can we do a letter from the board instead of having us just individually do that? We, just we can, but I'll be frank and say that at this point, you probably need to call your representatives and senator oh, okay. and let them know that oh, you don't okay. want that sweep bill passed. Okay. Because we've already done everything else as, as, as municipalities on my level. Right. to try to convince them this shouldn't happen. We, but if it comes from your level, it has a lot more force than if it comes from my level. Okay, we'll scare them. I anything, hope so. Anything else, Mary Louise, on the manager's report? Um, not at the moment. Regina. No, I'm good for the manager's report. I'm good. Thank you for your report. The Thank only thing you, I had, Fred, was I saw sir. this, this oh, letter yeah. here from the uh, fire chief. Oh, yes. Yes. Yep. And uh, I purposely gave it to the board members. Is it requesting uh, they participate in an auction at Sacred Heart School? Yep. Uh, I think it's a great idea. And I, and I also move that we give the chief okay. of the fire department permission to, to uh, do the escort ride to school uh, presentation. Yeah. Is the it motion a second? Does the town manager have anything to say? Uh, well, if you're going to do this, then we're going to check with our insurance company, make sure that all the proper forms yeah. Are, yeah. Are, are documented and, yep. and sure. the town has no liability with regards to this. Correct. So, right. Motion, second, Jim? Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right, we will go on to old business. Final res uh, revisions of the Hampton and Exeter sewer agreement. It's easy to say, but it it's is. hard to pronounce. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, as you know, we have been waiting for the um, Exeter to get back to us through their attorney uh, with regards to the changes and amendments uh, to the Exeter Hampton Sewer Agreement for the small portion of the western side of town that's serviced through Exeter. Uh, they have gotten back to us. I have received that information. Um, I won't change it without your consent. Uh, they would like to do one major change, which is uh, with regards to disputes in the system. They would like to go, instead of having an arbitrator, having a mediator, which in the reality is that means it's going to cost less money if we have a dispute. We haven't had any disputes. We've been working together quite well, and I don't anticipate we're going to have any. But that was a change that they requested, and I would request that you approve that. Do we need a motion? Uh, yes, I believe you do, only because 
you had previously approved it with the arbitrator, or the mediator, yeah, the arbitrator, in there, excuse me. I'll, I'll make second that motion. Yeah. All right, motion second. All those in favor? Unanimous. So do we have to do anything else about? No, everything else is fine. Okay. I have old business. Okay, go ahead, Rick. Um, one of the, th I, after we had a discussion about those guinea pigs, <laughs> I read a big article about them. This is a problem all over the country and typically what's happening there is what most people do. Um, there's a lot of people that buy guinea pigs and don't. Um, you know, it becomes a problem. They're hard to get rid of them. Oh. But it's a big problem all over the country. And typically, exactly what's happening, what we were just discussing, is the way that it's usually handled. And the article that I read is in um, Los Angeles Magazine. I meant to bring it tonight. I forgot, but I'll be glad to bring it to you, Mark. Thank you very much. Poor <clears throat> little guinea pig. Yeah, old home. business. Go ahead, Regina. Yes, I like to talk, and I think Mark wants to add something as well to this on Senate Bill 287. Oh, yes. Which is going to tighten up the regulations on PFC contaminants. And that is going to hearing, I believe, Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Um, I won't be able to attend, but if anyone is interested, I want to make sure um, I attended a panel discussion that, of course, the panel included Mindy Mesmer mm -hmm. and uh, Lindsay Carmichael. And it was at Lane Library, and they asked me to moderate it. And it went very well. We had a pretty good crowd, and there was a question and answer period. And this is really beginning to unravel. It's something that needs to be addressed. It should have been addressed decades ago. Yes. But because of all the work that uh, Mesmer has done and a lot of other really dedicated individuals that really have you know, their children or grandchildren or people that they love affected by what's going on with this water, I think this bill is very important. Um, and I ask that you support it. There is, they showed a documentary called The Devil We Know, <laughs> which was very eye-opening. I mean, I've done a lot of work with it, but watching the documentary is, mm. it's eye-opening. It's a, a rude awakening, and it's something that needs to be addressed. And I know that we just talked about how, you know, it really needs to be addressed as a nation, but New Hampshire can be, have more conservative standards, which I think will really uh, benefit every single resident in the state. And I also think that I hope that NHDS right now, okay, which I'm sure that I don't know where they're pulling these numbers out of, but they have uh, estimated expenditures for county and local. I left the state out of it completely. Mm -hmm. A low of 8.4 million to a high of 16.3 million that they'd want to appropriate for this bill. Uh -huh. And I'm pretty confident that they don't need to raise, they don't need to reappropriate it. So I'm hoping, hoping that DES can work with our senators and our, House of, and our House of Representatives and find some way to get this money so that we don't have to charge taxpayers today for something that should have been done a long time ago. Mm. And if Mark has yep. anything to add, I'd like to hear from him. Yes, this bill is scheduled for hearing tomorrow, Regina. I believe it's 10 a.m. tomorrow, the 26th, yeah. Yeah, uh, this, this uh, follows on basically uh, our problem with aquarium wells and their contamination, which are uh, granted at a, at, a, at a lower level for most of those wells mm -hmm. than the current federal standard. However, uh, there is one well that has been closed for Six. some time yeah. that has a, a much higher concentrations and uh, has been dealt with mostly by shutting the well down, but at times of high demand, it has been so-called blended, mm -hmm. so that uh, essentially we are we are drinking these at a lower concentrate at a low concentration. Uh, Aquarian has done a great job in both sampling uh, its own wells at a, at a much f more frequent w rate once they discovered this, mm -hmm. and also in installing a pilot program of filtration to remove uh, the contaminant uh, on a pilot basis that's continuing through this month. Um, Unfortunately, the cost of remediation uh, is such that it runs into several million dollars that um, 
to engage in actual cleanup, that mon money is needed from such sources as uh, grants from the Groundwater Trust Fund, mm -hmm. New Hampshire Groundwater Trust Fund, that was created with funds coming from the MBTE settlement. And so uh, if these maximum contaminant levels are lowered sufficiently, I believe it enhances the opportunity for a successful grant application on the part of entities like Aquarian. Um, I attended, as, as per the board's instructions, the uh, session that was held in Exeter, the first of its kind, the neighborhood listening session that EPA conducted of people who had been exposed uh, to this kind of contamination at Pease, uh, at the St. Gobain site in Merrimack, and also at the St. Gobain site in, uh, I think it was uh, Vermont. Yeah. And the kinds of stories that they tell of, of the health, adverse health impacts mirror very closely the kinds of uh, impacts that was appeared in this Devil We Know film mm -hmm. from West Virginia. It's, yeah. It is uh, very disturbing. Um, and what this bill does basically is it, it, uh, it uh, it does one better than what DES is doing now in its rulemaking, lowering the levels even lower mm. uh, to give us the kind of protections yeah. that states like New Jersey and Vermont have adopted. And so I, I believe um, it's important to stay ahead of this uh, emerging contaminant crisis. And uh, I believe it's, uh, it would be helpful if the board did vote to authorize uh, us, uh, Fred and myself, Mm -hmm. uh, Regina, to um, to voice our support for this bill of Senator Sherman's. I just want to say one thing too, because this bill is also very important. Because we speak of aquarian wells, but I mean, not everyone, even all, everyone in this town is on aquarian water. We have a lot of people that are on private wells. Yeah. So this would really solve the problem of the whole state. So I think we need to stop looking at like Aquarian over here and you know, we got, I don't even know how many systems, I believe it, they talk about how many things we have going on in this bill, how many different systems there are. So the state by looking at it one big way, I think can, you know, probably when Aquarian's time is, it will be easier to get grants, existing funds, I'm not sure, but I think that we really need to uh, support this bill and hope that our legislator can do it in a way that it doesn't crush the taxpayer. Mr. Chairman, are we a non-public? Why is where did the screen go? Where are the problems I, with 22? I have no idea. The screen the screen is usually black anyway. So oh, I was just a little puzzled. Um, uh, Councillor, well, 22 supposedly is on the verge of coming online. I don't know whether it will be possible for Aquarian to completely shut down well six, which is the highly contaminated well that you're referring to, uh, in the future. So if we can partly solve our problems that way, uh, we should probably ask Aquarian how close they are to getting 22 online. It's not fair to say it's highly contaminated because it falls under the, the state guidelines and the national well guidelines. Six. Yes. Well, it's. It's, it's contaminated. It's it has not some contamination. To get people upset. And right, they take but it's it not highly contaminated. Well, I mean, well, I make a motion we authorize Fred and Mark to write a letter in support of this. I'll make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. It, it may also be necessary, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I want to check on this scheduling of the hearing tomorrow. It may be important enough to uh, attend that hearing if necessary. Yeah, I agree. In, in the motion, if they want, if they need to, if they feel the need, need yeah, absolutely, sure, have yeah. the possibility. All right, go. the consensus and of the board is that if it's a need is felt. And if there's anyone at home, like I said, I can't go tomorrow. But <clears> if there is anyone at home that can too, you know, the more people that show up in Concord, always the better. <laughs> Anything on the older business, <laughs> new business, amendment code of ordinance chapter seven six one solid waste credit accounts. Mr. Chairman, um, it's come to my attention that approximately 20 plus years ago, uh, the town authorized uh, transfer station credit accounts to businesses in the community. Mm -hmm. 
and it's never been codified. Uh, so I propose codification uh, so that we have some rules and regulations to work by yep. as opposed to just letting things hang out there free and dangle around in the, mm -hmm. in the hinterland. So uh, this is a new, uh, the solid waste, is this a new or is this an addition to what we already have? This codifies what we already have. Okay. Yeah. I will move that under uh, 761-12 transfer station credit accounts for solid waste. Uh, I will move that we accept that. Addition, right, Fred? It is an addition to the, that addition section. Addition to I have the a 761. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Fred. That's well done. Anything Thank else you. on the new business? Um, oh, can I just, sure. I just wanted to give an update on the, uh, Coastal Hazardous Adaptation Team that I'm on. We actually were presented with our primary, four primary objectives. So I just wanted to read those to the public so that they could have a little better understanding of what we're gonna try to uh, resolve over the next year. So number one, improve coordination of flood hazard management and ad adaptation efforts in Hampton. Two, investigate, analyze, and prioritize flood management and adaptation strategies and present recommendations to the municipal boards and commissions for consideration. Three, inform residents about flood hazard management and adaptation options the town is considering and enable residents to provide input on these options. And four, provide educational and public outreach opportunities concerning flood hazard management and adaptation strategies. Mm, good. So we're trying to uh, put together what we're going to try to accomplish over the next year, and hopefully we can uh, come to con some conclusions as to where we need to move next. Okay. Mary Louise. Yes. Uh, Fred, you were kind enough to give us the uh, 1054 Ocean Boulevard. What are we doing with that? The, uh, the wall and all that messy stuff up there. That's currently in regulatory limbo, but... Uh, it's being taken care of by the Conservation Commission and the Planning Department. Okay, so this is... And Building Department. Okay, so yeah. we have this as information. It's information for you that something's going on up there and, and they're going to handle it. And if something goes wrong, at least you know that... Because that is a mess. Okay, actually, because I know you've been... Yes, it, yeah. it was incorrectly built. It's yeah. a problem. Oh, I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Seeing no other new business... Uh, we have a motion to go into a non-public under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon three Roman two small e litigation. <laughs> so I have a second. I'll second and give oh, us the all, time. All those in favor? At what time? Roll Aye. call. Yes, please. Aye. 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 Time is 922. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>